Hello, I'm Dr. Jerry Fishkin, and welcome to my show, Unprecedented. If one word could describe 2020, this is it. Whether we want to or not, we keep hearing on repeat, like a terrible dream or a broken record we just cannot turn off. If you're like me, the word unprecedented now brings a visceral, almost physical reaction political turmoil, a pandemic no one has experienced in the last 100 years, an economic meltdown, job losses unheard of since the Great Depression, isolation from everything we know, and distancing from people we love, breaking news we want to run away from, and most recently, a reckoning with broken systems and an uprising of civil disobedience I have not seen in my lifetime. And I've seen a lot. So what could possibly be next? When people say to me that this is a nightmare, I tell them, lovingly of course, they're wrong. We can awaken from a nightmare. But there's no escaping the sometimes irrational and draconian measures used to control COVID-19 contagion. Sometimes, as in this case, I believe, the treatment is more devastating than the disease itself. NBC News reports that Americans are the unhappiest they've been <clears throat> in 50 years, and that only 14% of us say that we're very happy. That means 86% of us are unhappy. So it's no wonder we're feeling sick, tired, depleted, confused, uncertain, afraid. The world around us is suddenly flipped upside down without warning. We have no timeline of when or if things will ever flip back to normal. We are all trying to hold the world still and make sense of it at a time when very little makes sense. Yes, this turmoil is unprecedented, at least in our lifetime. But I assure you, even in an upside down world, there is a path to healing, a path to renewal. Once some of this dust starts to clear, the key is to pay attention to the forces that have actually been building up to this moment. 2020 didn't exist and doesn't exist in a vacuum. It didn't start the fire, as Billy Joel says. We've been experiencing imbalance and red flags for some time. We just haven't paid attention to them. So here's a perspective. COVID-19 has led to a crisis in physical and mental health. Online searches for therapy have increased 200% since March. Anxiety, depression, suicide, child abuse, domestic violence, and substance abuse are on the rise. And I've been told that the marijuana dispensaries are doing a watershed business. The pot is flying off the shelves. A friend of mine who manages our local BevMo told me that sales are up over 150% compared to this time last year. And a primary reason for this increase in drug and alcohol consumption is that people are living and working in isolation. People are not only isolated, but they're feeling emotionally insulated from others as well. Firsthand, I'm seeing how others are dealing with serious illness, fears about the health and safety of loved ones, and even divorces are skyrocketing in numbers in this, as a function of this pandemic. The emotional and physical toll on people is mounting as evidenced by a significant rise in the use of employee assistance hotlines and telehealth. Since the beginning of the pandemic, <clears throat> I have continued treating patients at my office. On the outer door of my waiting room, we posted a sign from the CDC that says, if individuals are showing any signs or symptoms of COVID-19, 
they're asked to contact their doctor immediately. The majority of my patients have continued their weekly sessions throughout the lockdown, and none of them wanted to have Skype or Zoom appointments, and really neither did I. They all wanted to come in. It's my personal belief that when it comes to treatment, the sense of comfort, warmth, and the intimacy derived through self-revelation can only be attained in a face-to-face -face setting. That's my belief. Many people are also experiencing profound and sudden loss of a job, of familiar routines, and sadly for too many, the tragedy of losing a loved one. A colleague's wife had her leg amputated last month and her husband was not allowed to be at her bedside either before or after her surgery just to give her comfort. For many, pre-existing emotional and personality issues have resurfaced, issues that have been building for some time. As a psychotherapist, I'm on the front lines of this pandemic. Every day, I see patients who are considered essential workers, firefighters, police officers, healthcare workers, all witnessing and experiencing daily pain. I also see patients pushed to the edge through forced isolation, which feeds their trauma. Our children are also the victims. For many, distance learning is not possible or feasible or a reality. Over 35% of families in South Los Angeles have no internet connection or broadband, and over 45% of those same families do not have a computer. Even without frontline trauma, all of us are challenged right now. Families are huddled together, working from home, or looking for work in sometimes tight, tight spaces. Our communities look so different now as well. Husbands and wives are forced to stay at home together 24 seven, frequently adding to their marital distress are the issues never addressed prior to the lockdown and are now amplified by the frustrations associated with the lockdown. An additional stress is that they are suddenly thrust into full-time teacher roles without training or even the opportunity to have a break. People worldwide are experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder, but I promise you, there is another side to it and a way out. I call this a worldwide reset. As a personality theorist with an existential orientation, I seek to understand what the primary elements of our psychological life are. I believe we exist as a function of two primary elements, those being time and energy. And our lives depend upon how we spend both. In fact, energy psychology focuses on mind and body approaches to understand and improve functioning. It focuses on the relationship between our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and behaviors. And it is influenced by cultural and environmental factors like COVID-19 or forced isolation or even racial injustice. You're probably wondering where this whole time and energy piece comes from. Here's my take on it. And this is what I call the ribbon that ties it all together. Here it is. Our time and energy have always been spent on virtual interactions. And now, ironically, they are the only option. Cell phones, social media, email, internet searches, Zoom meetings, telehealth appointments. We've literally stopped having durable experiences. And even if we had spent a lot of time on the screen in the past, this quote new normal removes our choice and our control in the matter. That's not what we want and it's not what we need. Uh, just to point out how interpersonally disjointed and emotionally distant we've become, Zoom 
is now being used by companies to lay people off. It was reported in protocol.com that under normal circumstances, hard meetings about staff cuts would happen in person. They always have. But in the COVID-19 crisis, the best companies can do is video chat. But what about the employee who was just terminated on a video chat without any sense of emotion, warmth, comfort, or support? What about them? We have clung to our cell phones like oxygen, like digital umbilical cords, distancing ourselves from the real, actual people around us. We had spent hours on social media using apps designed to make our digital life more exciting than our physical one. We use emojis and truncated text to express our emotions. Not only have we truncated our own emotions through digital communication, we even hide our own sense of responsibility by mouthing the words, my bad. My bad. What, what does my bad mean? Do you ever see people say, when I hear people say my bad, I see a complete lack of emotion or responsibility. There's no shame. There's no guilt. My bad. It's kind of like my bad. Next. I never want to hear that word. My bad. Because what it says to me is you really don't give a damn. But if you want to use my bad, go ahead. Just don't use it around me. And that's really the only condition that I have. Really don't use the word my bad because my bad is kind of like saying should or fair. They don't mean anything. The word fair, maybe it's, it works in a classroom, but it doesn't work in real life. So anyway, my bad, should, fair, they're not real words. In our quest to save time and energy, we had already grown alienated. We've become emotionally atrophied, disengaged from our experience, each other, and most importantly, most importantly, ourselves. And here we are, face to face with all of it and nowhere to go. This is where the good news comes in. I promised you that. This time of crisis is also a time of incredible, incredible opportunity. We've missed out on so many potential new experiences by limiting our universe to a digital one. But after being pushed into forced isolation, we're missing terribly what we always took for granted, connections that feed our time and energy, durable, real world experiences that build and enrich our lives and make them worthwhile. Talking to people face to face without a screen in between is an incredibly bonding experience. Family time and alone time can help us rediscover our loved ones and ourselves, most importantly, ourselves. We can even appreciate going to work and running simple errands again. Remember the first grocery store visit when everything was back in stock or the walk with a friend you hadn't seen in months? Each of these reclaimed experiences now feels new. For me, seeing toilet paper on shelves now is a real turn on. I have missed seeing durable goods on shelves because the hoarders, for whatever reason, thought that they needed all that paper stuff. Turns out they didn't, but you won't be able to sell it on, uh, on eBay or on uh, Amazon, or you can't take it back to Costco. So enjoy your toilet paper, hoarders. You know, it's like a broken leg that atrophies through disuse. We finally have time to focus on that leg. We're yearning to reconnect with people and activities and favorite places that we're used to going to. And after such a long time, <clears throat> we need to actually reconnect with ourselves. We need a new sense of community. After the cast of isolation is removed, 
rehabilitation can begin and we can refocus our time and our energy to maximize our functioning and human potential. As your neighborhood reopens, what are you looking forward to? Will you keep glancing at your cell phone when visiting a friend? Will you take time to talk to your coworkers instead of emailing them when you're right in a cubicle next to them? Hmm. Will you call your mom more often? What about taking time for self care, making sure you build up the physical and mental reserves to keep yourself strong. This crisis has given us something new, the gifts of time, of energy, of relationships, of new endeavors, and most important ourselves, if we choose to take them. So 2020, has been a huge reset for all of us. We've been practicing social distancing and emotional distancing for years. We just hadn't labeled it. Cell phones and digital media should not be the only arrow in our quiver. The other arrow needs to be compassion, both for ourselves and others, all others. When we put our digital media in the back seat. Research shows that when it comes to interpersonal communication, our sense of touch is one of our more powerful experiences. For example, one university experiment discovered that shaking hands led to more open and honest communications and thus better outcomes. This is because as science shows, touch increases the release of oxytocin, also known as the cuddle hormone, as well as dopamine, which in turn builds trust among people and makes us feel good. When we take all of the distractions and impulse aspects out of our life, as we have all experienced since the lockdown, we basically only have each other. And maybe, maybe we have taken that for granted. When asked, everyone says they want or need more free time or time with lo their loved ones. Only recently have we been pushed to see what this feels like. And it's been uncomfortable, eye opening, and so difficult. But the only way out of a challenge is to go through it. That's the nature of trauma and the nature of tragedies. Oh, yeah, they hurt, but they can also help us heal wounds that we hadn't noticed. And by reprioritizing, how we spend our time and our energy, we can end up in a much happier and healthier place. So here it is. Here are the five things I want you to do to help normalize your life during this very unnormal time. Number one, develop a daily routine, such as waking up <clears throat> Monday through Friday at your regular time, like you would if you're going to your office or going to work. Take a shower, do just what you did before <sighs> the quarantine, have breakfast, but live and develop a normal routine. People are defaulting to laying in bed uh, all morning and, and not taking personal care and, and not taking care of their hygiene. And that's, that's not good. Number two, <clears throat> set realistic goals for yourself and don't push yourself even harder. Many people are using this time to do personal repairs around their home and taking care of things that have been overlooked because of life. Keep a regular work schedule just because you're at home. Don't work 18 or 20 hours a day. Have a good balance between work and play. And I'll get back to that. Number three, cultivate self care strategies such as exercise, reading, meditating, and that includes creative activities and hobbies and sports activities that can be enjoyable. We all need good, healthy self care. And that also means we need something to look forward to. And that leads me to number four, develop or participate in a healthy social network by maintaining consistent contact with friends, family, and loved ones. Number five, Monitor your own stress and burnout levels. Don't overwork and don't overstress. 
maintain a healthy balance be between work and play. Most important, let's all not catastrophize and awfulize the situation we're in. Remember, from a cognitive behavioral standpoint, the more you catastrophize and awfulize, the more miserable you're gonna feel. So stop doing that. Time and energy. Why burn time and why kill your energy by catastrophizing and awfulizing? Things will change. Things will get back to normal. And in the process, we don't wanna to leave too much scar tissue behind. Some of these prophylactic uh, healthcare practices that we're involved with now, such as wearing gloves, masks, sprays, will probably remain for a while and become part of our new normal until a vaccine is developed to protect our population's health. Until then, let's all remember that we are, in fact, all in this together. We must remember that we are resilient, and that we're adaptable, and we will survive this together. We all need positive inspiration and hope, especially hope, to see us through this most chaotic time. Translated, that means backing off broadcast news, which only reinforces the chaotic nature of this pandemic and how it's being handled or not handled, depending upon party affiliation. There is no uniform protocol for dealing with this. And I think the, the mayors and governors are all trying to do what they do to keep their folks safe, but there is no uniformity. And I think that's a big problem. It is my sincerest hope that we will replace the former social, I don't give a damn attitude with one that reflects a more optimistic, caring and compassionate approach to life and community. So I'm Dr. Jerry Fishkin, wishing you all good health, happiness. Oh, and this is my four-legged son, Jamie. We're all wishing you the best. And I look forward to seeing you the next time on the Dr. Jerry Fishkin Show. Also, I wanna give a shout out to Vanita Ja. Vanita was my editor on my my book, the award-winning The Science of Shame and Its Treatment, she was my senior editor. She's also come back to me now as the senior content editor for my show and for uh, Good Fish Productions. Also, I want to thank uh, the fellows at uh, Breather for the new intro and outro music that was written for us. And uh, I want to thank them very much for providing me good sound. And by the way, you can pick up my COVID-19 video on YouTube or therapycable.com. Until next time, be safe, be healthy, and be engaged. God bless y'all. Take care.